the derivation of the multivariate extreme value models is quite technical and too cumbersome to introduce in a video. In this video, I will summarize the main intuition and the main ideas, and then you will find the technical details in the written documents. In order to derive the MEV models, we first need to define what is a MEV distribution. This is actually the distribution of a random vector. Why a vector? Because we put all the error terms of all the alternatives in the same random vector in order to be able to capture correlation. And what we need to do is to define the distribution from its CDF, the cumulative distribution function. So the CDF of the random vector consisting of the error terms for individual n is a function of capital J parameters corresponding to the capital J alternatives. And this is equal to e to the minus g e to the minus xi e to the minus xi j. So this is the definition of the MEV distribution. Two comments about it. The first one is that the CDF is defined from another function that I denote capital G here, which has also as arguments capital J parameters. We recall this function the generating function. And the idea of this MEV models and MEV distribution is that we will think about it in terms of G and not in terms of F. If I have a generating function, capital G, I can build the cumulative distribution function, the CDF, using this formula. So this is the first comment. So we basically focus on G instead of focusing on F. And the second comment is that you can see this double exponential format of this equation. And this reminds you of the definition of the extreme value distribution for a single random variable. Okay, so of course now we have this g function, which we didn't have in the case of a single random variable, but we still have this double exponential formulation, which relates this to extreme value. Now, in order to be a valid multivariate extreme value distribution, this capital G function must verify three properties. And these properties are quite technical. I will tell you in a minute why we need these properties. But basically, there are three properties. One is called the limit property. The second one is called the mu homogeneity property. And the third one is the strong alternating sign property. So you will see the definitions of these properties in the technical documents. One thing which is important to keep in mind is that the homogeneity property is associated with a mu parameter. And I use the letter mu here on purpose, because this mu will play the exact same role as the mu as the scale parameter in the logit model. Okay, so keep it in mind that in this case, for the g function, mu is the homogeneity parameter of the function. Okay, so the story is, if you give me a g function that verifies these three properties, I obtain a CDF for the multivariate extreme value distribution. But where do these properties come from? But there are basically three motivations. The first motivation is that we need F to be a valid CDF. So F must verify the properties of a valid CDF. And basically, the first thing we will do in these technical documents is to find the corresponding properties that G must have so that F is a valid CDF. But then there are two other properties that we would like that are desirable for this distribution. One, we want the choice model the, that we will derive just afterwards to have a closed form. And the second thing is that we would like the marginal distribution to be extreme value, right? It's a multivariate extreme value distribution. And as you will see in the derivation of the model and the distribution, if the three conditions are verified, then we will be able to prove that f is a valid CDF, that the choice model will have closed form, and that the marginals are extreme value distributed. So this is really the motivation for the technical conditions associated with the generating function g. 
Okay, so now we have a distribution, a CDF for the error terms of our choice model. But what about the model itself? Well, we will derive the multivariate extreme value model from first principles. And what do I mean by first principles? If you go back to the very first lecture on random utility theory, I derived a generic formulation for the choice model from the CDF of the error terms. And this is the formula that we obtained at that time. The choice model is defined by a unidimensional integral that involves the partial derivative of the CDF with respect to its i's parameter, where i is the alternative for which you calculate the choice probability. And the arguments of this function are the differences of utilities plus this epsilon on which we integrate. So this is the general formulation of a choice model based on random utility theory. If you know the CDF of the distribution of the error terms. Again, this is what I call first principles. But now I'm in a context where I know the CDF. I have defined it. I have the formula for capital F. It depends on this capital G function, the generating function. So what I will do, I will use G to define F. And then I will plug F into this formulation and make the derivation. So this is purely calculus. Again, I refer you to the technical documents for the details. But the bottom line is the following. We obtain the choice model for the multivariate extreme value model. And we obtain this nice formula. And so we remember we have g is the generating function that maps a vector of dimension capital J into a value. And what we denote by g i here is the partial derivative of g with respect to its i's coordinates. Great. Now we have a choice model. And there are two important remarks to do about it. The first is that it's a closed form. Okay, if you give me the G function, I can calculate these partial derivatives that I call GI and GJ. And then I can plug them into this formula to obtain the choice model in a closed form. It does not involve any integral anymore. But the second thing, and the most important one, is that it looks like a logit, doesn't it? Indeed, if you didn't have these terms here, it would be logit. So this can be viewed as a logit model where each deterministic part of the utility function are shifted by a term here. And this term actually captures the correlation among the alternatives. That's the idea. So the role of this G function is to capture the correlation of the error terms of the various alternatives. And therefore, this model becomes quite interesting and intuitive. So we have a logit model where the Vs are shifted to account for the correlation. That's a way to interpret it. So in the technical documents, you will see how we proceed through this process. We start from capital G, which is the generating function. We plug it into the formula that we have defined to obtain the CDF of the multivariate extreme value distribution. Then we plug this CDF into the formulation for the choice model, and we obtain the formula for the multivariate extreme value model. And we see that it has a closed form, and it has a format which is logit-like. Now, once we have derived this model, what we will do is to analyze some of the properties. First, we will verify that its marginal distributions are indeed extreme value. Two, we will derive the formula for the variance-covariance matrix. Well, keep in mind that we will not be able to have a closed-form formula for this matrix. Indeed, I mean, this is a complicated distribution, and it happens that the higher moments, moments of type 3, type 4, are actually important. 
and therefore the variance covariance matrix does not characterize the distribution contrarily to normal distribution for example but it doesn't matter we can still calculate it and again we will do it from first principles based on the cdf that we have obtained now remember i told you that the homogeneity parameter of the g function that i called mu plays actually the same role as the scale parameter in a logit model and actually it is not identified we will have to normalize it and again we will normalize it to one as we did for the logit model and then an interesting property would be that we will be able to derive the expected maximum utility of a set of alternatives directly from the g function and let me give you the formula The expected maximum utility of a set Cn of alternatives is defined as 1 over mu, where mu is this homogeneity parameter of the g function, the log of g, where g is the generating function, evaluated at e to the v1 to e to the vj, plus a constant here which is called Euler's constant, which is the same that is involved in the expected maximum utility of the logit model. So this result gives us uh, an interesting intuition about the G function. The G function is directly connected with the concept of expected maximum utility. So this is a nice interpretation in the context of random utility theory. Then we acknowledge the fact that verifying that G is a valid function is actually cumbersome because we have to verify these three properties that I mentioned earlier. And it's really, you know, tedious to do. Therefore, we propose a so-called inheritance theorem where you can take valid G function and combine them in a way that you obtain a valid G function from the combination. So this is nice because it avoids the need to re-verify these properties as you combine valid G functions. You have the guarantee that the outcome of this combination will be a valid G function. And this is interesting because, in particular, we know two specific members of this family, which are the logit model and the nested logit model. So I will give you the G function for these two models and show you that they fit in this family. So the G function verifies the property. We can plug it into the CDF. We can plug it into the model and to find, again, the logit and the nested logit model. Therefore, we can actually combine them using this inheritance theorem in order to find more complicated G functions, which will be automatically valid thanks to the theorem. Multivariate extreme value models happens to be a family of choice models. This family is derived from first principles using a so-called probability generating function that we denoted capital G. The model that we obtain is logit like it looks like a logit and it involves a correction term capturing the correlation among the error terms of the alternatives it happens that the logit model and the nested logit models are members of this family of models and we will also see another model called the cross nested logit model that belongs to this family and that happens to be quite useful 